On this episode of Service My Ride, we're replacing our cracked radiator. G'day guys, welcome to another episode of Service My Ride. Today we're going to be replacing the radiator. Uh, the old one, uh, we picked up a crack over the Easter long weekend, we went for a drive up to Lithgow uh, and when driving out we've seen our temperatures getting a little bit high so today we've got a new radiator and we're going to replace it. So when the engine is cool, jump under the car and remove any underbody protection so that we can gain full access. And on the bottom of most modern car radiators there will be a drain plug, but if not you can also do this by removing the bottom radiator hose. Then you can remove the radiator cap and the supply hose coming from the radiator condenser tank. So just tuck the hose down to the side out of the way and we'll get back to it later. And because we are removing the radiator we're going to disconnect any power running to the engine by removing the negative terminal. And by using a set of pliers we can remove that pinch clamp holding on that top radiator hose. And these hoses are going to be on quite tight, so with a bit of twisting and turning, that should remove the hose straight from the collar. And there may be some coolant in this top hose, so by aiming it through the engine bay, hopefully we can get it in that drain pan that's still under the car. Now we need to remove the radiator shroud, and as you can see, even by removing that top radiator hose, there's not a great deal of space to work with. Even trying to get that small ratchet in there, I still couldn't gain access to the bolt. So I ended up just using a small spanner instead. And removing the bolt on the driver's side, there was no issues with access at all, so back to the ratchet it was. Now if you haven't already removed the bottom hose, it is the same as the top hose. Using a pair of pliers to pinch the hose clamp to slide it out of the way. And this hose could also be stubborn to remove, so by pulling and some twisting and some turning, it should remove it from the bottom collar. So just be careful, there will be coolant in this line, so have your drain pan handy. Now that we've removed the shroud, we can move on to the radiator. And this is an automatic, so first we need to remove the cooler lines for the automatic transmission. And the same process, using a pair of pliers, we can remove that pinch clamp to slide off the hose. And make sure you remove both top and bottom cooler lines. Once we've removed the transmission cooler lines, there was only two bolts holding in the radiator. And with good access to both these bolts, I was able to use the socket to remove both of them. Now that we've drained the radiator, we've disconnected all the coolant lines, we've removed the two support bolts, we can simply just lift the radiator straight from the car. Now it's out of the car and before we throw it in the bin, we just need to remove that bottom cooler hose for the transmission, because we'll have to add this to the new radiator. And by using our pliers, we can remove that pinch clamp to remove the hose. And plus we get an installation guide for installing it. So let's get into it. Now with your new radiator, if you didn't get the new lower support insulators, you'll need to remove them from the old radiator first. Give the mounts a wipe down before installing them. Yeah. 
And before you add the radiator back into the car, first we just want to connect up the transmission cooler hoses back to the bottom of the radiator. This is a lot easier to do with the radiator out of the car. So when installing the radiator, you want to make sure that those two lower mounts sit firmly inside the insulators. Then we can return the two top bolts to secure the radiator into place. And the torque setting for these two bolts is 11 Nm. Then we can return both transmission lines, reinstall the radiator shroud locking it into place with the two screws. Then we can return the bottom and top radiator hoses, making sure to secure them with the hose clamp. So we've installed the radiator, now it's time for the flush. So I've picked up some radiator flush and I've also got some demineralised or some distilled water. Um, these are from Super Cheap Auto and they're about $8 for, what are they, 5 litres? Yeah, for 5 litres. Uh, and you can use this for batteries uh, and your cooling system as well. So if you've got a battery where you need to top it up with water, this is the best stuff to use. So the instructions for the flush seem pretty simple. It's just pour this bottle in and then top it up with water. Once it's topped up, we return the cap and then we can start the car and run it for 10 minutes. So what I've got here is, um, I've got the torque app, which I've opened it up to give us our live reading. And what I've done is I've set it to 
uh, our temperature gauge, just so we can keep an eye on what the engine's actually doing and we can read the temperature gauge uh, while we're out here at the engine instead of being in the car. Um, good little tool that you can use, um, it helps out massively. Um, you can check if anything's going to go wrong, if there's any errors. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see what's going on in the engine um, while you're out here because you can't actually see what the, the, what the dash is doing with sensors. Uh, but this just makes it a lot easier. So we've now run the engine for about 15 minutes. We've let it warm up. We've allowed all the water to circulate through the engine. We've had the engine turned off now for about 15 minutes, so it should be cool enough now to touch. Now with the flush, it might take quite a few goes to try and get all the old coolant out of the car. Keep going until you see the coolant run out clear. Once it's clear, then we can add in our new coolant and we should be done. <laughs> pretty clear now. There's not much coolant left in the system, so let's we'll see how we go. I reckon we're almost done with our flush, so we'll drain this out. Have a look at the top, see what's happening. But that's looking pretty clear. And I think we've finished all our flushes. So the way that we're flushing the system is just by through the radiator through the drain plug. A couple of other ways you can do it as well, undoing the heater core to release all the water out of there. And you can also come in behind the alternator and there's a water hose that runs off the oil cooler. Um, you can also release that to get the water out of the engine, which is, it, it's a faster process, but it's a harder process to try and get into the hoses to try and release them to get them off. Um, if you're a beginner to it, it's probably best to stick with the radiator. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, but if you've got some more tools, but bit more hands-on uh, and you want to get in behind the engine you can remove the thermostat and you can also remove the water hose. So after several attempts of flushing out our system we have got some clean water coming out the drain plug at the bottom of the radiator. Now we need to add the coolant back into the system. Now with this system it holds 8.2 litres of water uh, and we need to run it at a 50-50 mix. So we're going to put in 100% concentrate and we need to add at least 4 litres. So I've got our container here, holds a litre at a time, we need to pour 4 in. If you fill your system up with your four litres and it still needs more fluid inside the system, uh, we go back to the water and add the water. Now if you've flushed out the system, there's still a small amount of green radiator coolant uh, coming through, out through your drain plug. It's not too bad, you can still run the coolant in the system up to 60%. Not that it's advised, you want to try and keep it at around 50%, but the system can hold up to at least a 60% concentration of your coolant. Um, so if you don't get it all out, it's not too bad. Um, but try and flush it out the best you can. You want the cleanest of water coming out, uh, and then you know your requirements to add four litres of water back in there. We'll give it a nice 50-50 mix once we're done. So we'll fill up our container. We need to put four of these back into the car, and hopefully that's all we need. for a drive and keep an eye on the temperature gauge inside the car to make sure that it sits in the normal driving position. When we get home and the engine cools down, we can recheck the radiator cap, make sure that it's still full with fluids. If not, we can top it up with some water, uh, check our overflow, make sure that that's still got enough in there that it hasn't drained from there into the radiator. If it is, top it up with the coolant. 
And that's about all there is to show on replacing and flushing out the radiator system. But guys, so if you like this content and want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button down the bottom. Hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload to YouTube. Also check out Facebook and Instagram for updates weekly. Uh, and also if you just want to ask questions or leave them in the comments below on this video. And I try to get back to everybody as soon as I can. So get out there and give it a go and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.